Hello YouTube, welcome to Cyprime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. With Paizo getting ready to release the playtest of Starfinder 2nd Edition on the 1st of August 2024 during Gen Con, I thought it might be a good time to release a few videos getting people up to speed with the story of Starfinder. These videos are meant to act as a quick refresher for veteran players who maybe haven't played in a bit or help out new people who want to check out Starfinder for the first time with the basic premise. Today we're going to cover the very basics of Starfinder. So first off, Starfinder is a role-playing game produced by Paizo, the same company that makes Pathfinder. Starfinder is a science fantasy game, which means it has both sci-fi elements, but also magic. It's kind of similar to Star Wars in that there are both spaceships, but also supernatural forces. Starfinder is set many, many years into the future from Pathfinder. How many years is hard to know of because of the gap, and that's the first thing we should cover. The Gap is a period of time in the Starfinder universe where all records are just blank. Seriously, any media ever produced during the Gap has been wiped, both written and digital records, and most problematically of all, all memories made during the Gap are also gone. Information created from before the Gap can still survive after the Gap ended, including memories of some of the longer-lived races, but no information made during the Gap has survived. Now, a couple of things happened during the Gap. The world of Galarian, which is where most of the games of Pathfinder take place on, is just gone. Like, the Gap ended and people looked for Galarian and it just wasn't there. It hasn't blown up, there's no debris, it's just straight up gone. Also gone is the god-killing super destruction deity Rovagug, who was at the center of Galarian, along with the deific head of the dwarven pantheon, Torag. The only remnant we have of Galarian is the space station called Absalom Station, which presumably was in orbit of Galarian, but now is just kind of orbiting the sun. The Starstone, the magic super rock that was at the center of the city of Absalom in Pathfinder, is now at the heart of Absalom Station in Starfinder. And no one knows what happened during the Gap. The closest people have gotten is petitioning powerful divine entities for answers with magics like Commune, and the responses have always been something akin to, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Not surprisingly, people waking up with no memories and no records one day caused a lot of chaos, and several civilizations collapsed, including the planet of bug people called Elytrio. Surprisingly, though, several other civilizations did manage to muddle their way through. Now, we have to switch gears here for a second and talk about another major aspect of Starfinder, which is drift travel. So any fan of science fiction, or science fantasy in this case, will know that you are going to have to go faster than the speed of light in order to get anywhere in the universe in any reasonable amount of time. Star Wars has the hyperdrive for this... Star Trek has the warp drive. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has the infinite improbability drive. <laughs> you get it. Starfinder has the drift drive. You see, a mere three years after the gap ended, the god of machines, Triune, sent out a signal that divinely inspired engineers from across the universe to build drift engines. Drift drives are weird and wonky. Essentially, a drift drive shunts a spaceship into another plane of existence. This plane, called the Drift, is weird. I think Mystery Science Theater 3000 explained it best. Space is warped and time is bendable. In other words, the normal rules of space and distance don't work in the Drift, at least not at large scales. Inside a starship, everything is fine, but across interstellar distances... Well, things get messed up. You see, there are things called drift beacons that exist both in the drift and in the normal universe at the same time. When a starship is in the drift, navigating to one of these beacons, or a bunch of them clustered together, is simple and fast. Navigating to a place with few or no beacons is harder and takes longer. So while traveling from the middle of nowhere to a place with a lot of drift beacons could take at most a couple of weeks, 
Traveling back the same way you came could take a month. Oh, and one last thing about the drift. Remember that Absalom station I told you about? Well, for some reason that people still haven't figured out, the Star Stone at the center of Absalom Station is, like, the best drift beacon ever. Traveling to it takes only 1d6 days, no matter where you are in the galaxy. That means that Absalom Station is essentially the trade center of the universe, because everyone can just show up and trade and exchange goods there. So that makes it kind of the go-to spot for a lot of Starfinder material. Now there's a lot more that I could get into. Drift travel stopped working for a bit, and now there are these interstellar wormhole-like things called drift lanes, but I think this is enough information to at least get you started. So, hey, leave a comment and let me know if this was helpful. And while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube, that you like this kind of content and would like to see more. Thank you, good luck, and happy gaming!